So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple actually just released iPadOS 14.6 beta one to developers and I believe public developers as well now at this point because we are a little bit late to this one, to this update video, but I did want to share with you guys some of the new things that they added because it was a huge update because again, we're going from 14.5 to 14.6 and we're getting 14.6 before you even get the normal 14.5 public release, which is kind of interesting by Apple. But let's figure out exactly what they changed up because with four and a half gigs for an install, we better get something. But at the same time, I don't think we're going to get much. Let's figure it out. So before we actually get started and go through the build number and things like that, I did want to point something out because I don't really think it was 14.6 specific that this kind of rolled out to because obviously we saw it before updating. So I took a screenshot of it. And if you guys can see that this is the update screen before I actually update it to 14.6. And you can see that down here, it's showing me also available iPadOS 14.6. And then you click on that and it lets you update from there. So this is technically still on 14.5 when I took this screenshot. If I go to my actual settings right now and go to software update, then you can see that it's normal. And the little bottom option isn't there because 14.6 beta 2 is not out yet. But in the screenshot, I'll let you know that, hey, 14.6 is available. So that's something a little bit interesting that Apple did do. But again, if we go into the actual settings, go to the about, let's find out what this build number looks like, right? So the build number that we're looking at is 18. F5046F. So again, this is beta one, it's pretty early in the process. And again, it's a very big update. So if I go into the actual image that I took a screenshot of, you can see that we're looking at about 4.65 gigs. So 4.65 gigs usually means that there's gonna be a big feature set or a big rollout of something new and at least visual and tangible. But as you guys are gonna see with these new updates that I noticed, there wasn't really much there. So one of the main ones that I did wanna show in terms of what's new is if you go into settings, for a lot of the time that I was using 14.5, and honestly up until now, when Apple introduced this new privacy tracking setting, this was always grayed out. Why? I don't really know. But now you have the option in 14.6 to toggle that off and on, which I like to do is I like to keep it on. So it allows apps to ask to track your activity across other companies and websites. So you can always learn more and figure out exactly what all that means if you want to go through the verbiage. But I like to keep myself safe and I want apps to ask me if they're going to be tracking me. And then other than that, the only real difference that I saw was in the podcast. So inside a podcast, you now have the ability to save episodes, follow shows, and then also see new show pages. But now the nice thing is that Apple is allowing us to subscribe to podcasts, which is something that they didn't allow before. So now you can go into your favorite ones and instead of just kind of following them, you subscribe to them. And every single time that something comes out, you'll be notified along those lines. So those are the only real differences, right? You have the new update screen, you have the new privacy tracking privacy setting that they finally ungrade because like I said, early on it was here, this little section, this toggle was here, but it was grayed out, which meant, gotta stop touching that, which meant that it wasn't active, right? So now it is, which is awesome. And then again, the podcast new subscription page. But overall, those are the only real differences. But then if I go to settings, let's go to the battery performance, see what that's looking like, because we've been attacking this battery a lot lately. So in the last 24 hours, you're looking at about five hours and five minutes of screen on time, but I like to look at the last 10 days and see what's going on here, right? So if I go on to Tuesday or Thursday, you can see that four hours and 47 minutes of screen on time, about 100% battery. So that's the kind of screen on time that I'm getting, about almost five hours, which honestly isn't that bad anymore. So two hours and nine minutes took up 50% of my battery, 25 minutes took up 14 with LumaFusion, and you can just go down the line here and kind of see. But again, you can see that NBA 2K, does take up a lot of my battery power because it is an awesome game and I do play it a lot and I've been kind of addicted to it. So shout out to 2K. But you can see that yesterday, didn't use it too much. And again, Monday was the big use day, six hours and 32 minutes. That was about a little under 150%, which means that obviously I plugged in, unplugged, and then replugged in. But battery life seems to be improving a little bit because before, if you guys remember, we were getting like two and a half, maybe three hours of screen on time. Now we're looking at four and a half. Now we're looking at four hours and 47 minutes, four hours and 40 minutes, five hours and 38 minutes, look at that, at 50%, which is nice to see. So overall, the battery life has gotten better and better, and I'm just hoping that it continues to get better, especially when iPadOS 15 comes out. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So like you saw, Apple, again, didn't really do anything different. I don't really know why the file size was so big. Again, 4.6 gigs is a huge file for 
it not to translate to more intense and more feature rich kind of differences and I guess features, right? So overall, nothing that new. There's a couple new splash screens, a couple new little add-ons, you know, like to the podcast and things like that. But other than that, I think Apple is probably just getting ready to really finalize everything, more security fixes, bug fixes. But at the same time, why is it so big? Unless they're planning something with beta two or so something like that. I don't know. I really don't know at this point, but pretty much gonna do with this video, everybody. Leave a comment below. Did you guys update the 14.6 beta one on either your iPhone or your iPad? Are you guys gonna get the new 2021 iPad Pros? How do you feel about the news that we might actually get, need to get a new Magic Keyboard with that new 2021 iPad Pro, which is, again, Apple. I'm gonna make a whole separate video kind of ranting on all that, so I'm not gonna start here. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, 